This video today will be about the somewhat newly released Park River Smoke Jumper. This is the second run of this knife and this run was not a very large one. Uh, and I think they based the run on the number of pre-orders made and there were not a ton of pre-orders made so I think they, the total amount of knives made was about 300. So quite a, a small run, which surprised me because I thought that the smoke jumper was going to be a, a very, you know, a, a very good seller with tons of pre-orders, but that was not the case. Uh, regardless, they are pretty much sold out now, at least over at DLT, I know for a fact. So uh, it did, you know, it did do quite well, uh, even though it was made in in smaller numbers or maybe that is the fact why it did well when it was known to people that it would not be a large run uh, regardless let's uh, take a look at um, let's see at this one for example so this is the standard sheath that is delivered with the smoke jumper this this sheath is kind of similar to the sheath that was delivered with the uh, with the oxus um, which was a Vement Knives and uh, Copus Knives um, collaboration. Uh, but the difference is that on the Oxus you could remove these straps and put them on the belt, you know, but these are uh, tight and firmly, you cannot remove these. They are permanently attached that way. Uh, but this is a, a good sturdy leather sheath in my opinion. Uh, it will work well. Uh, just with a bit less functionality compared to the to the sheath that I find it to be uh, share the most similarities with. Uh, we can take a look at the actual knife itself, and I I did bring uh, three smoke jumpers for this video so that we can get a look at some different uh, handle materials as well. So here it is. I should maybe have cleaned this knife uh, a little before uh, putting it on camera, but. My recording has already started, so let's just proceed with what we have. Uh, if there are any stains or anything here on the blade, it is from uh, from the Obenovs that I put on the, the sheath uh, a few days earlier. And I did some heavy coating, so it's it's not uh, impossible that there is some Obenovs uh, heavy duty leather protection on the blades and guards. Uh, what we have here is a uh, pink G10 mosaic pins smoke jumper with a double with a full guard you can also order these knives uh, with a single guard it would look something like this you know sort of like a um, sort of like a wilderness explorer we're gonna take a look at that knife as well we're gonna do some comparisons here but I went with a full guard on all three of my smoke jumpers because I thought it looked uh, I mean from a stylistic perspective I thought it looked good from a, a you know intended use I think the full guard uh, is a good option but I'm not gonna lie I mean I did go um, single guard with one of my sandstorms we're gonna take a look at that as well and I also went uh, with my single guard I also went sub hilt the smoke jumper was made with a sub hilt version, I think, in the original run, but this run was a uh, non sub hilt run. Uh, there were no no smoke jumpers at all made with a sub hilt. Not you know not a big issue to me personally, but maybe it had an impact on the pre orders made. Uh, since this is a full tang knife, uh, there will be no liners on on my knives here. Then again, uh, the handle materials that I ordered. Uh, required them to make it in two pieces the handle so I could actually I could have asked for black liners But to me this looks you know looks just as good. I mean it looks like it is a full uh, I mean it is a full tank, but it, it looks nice when there are no liners uh, in my humble opinion so looking at the specs here uh, the overall length of the smoke uh, smoke jumper is 11.15 inches with a blade length of 5.95 inches and as you can see uh, the cutting edge length will be slightly shorter it's, so it's about 5.8 inches perhaps I'd say the blade thickness of the knife you can see the 
the tapering going on here, but the, the blade thickness is 0.186. So it's not, you know, very thick, but it's not, you know, super thin either. Maybe I should try and do something like this for you to see. Yeah. Uh, the weight of the knife is, I mean, it will differ a bit from handle material and stuff like that, but around 8.8 .8 ounces. I didn't bring my scale with me here, so we can't really uh, check the weight, but it's somewhere in the vicinity of 8.8 .8 ounces. The steel used for the smoke jumper is CPM 3V, and that is, as some of you know, my favorite steel uh, out of all the steels Spark River offers. Unless I really need a, 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 a really good stainless option, then I, I usually opt for, um, for LMAX or in some cases uh, CPM 154CM. Uh, I also got my hands on the newly released um, um, Minigunny, which is CPM S45VN which is a stainless steel that I have yet to to try out. So that's going to be an interesting one, but I can't say, I, I really can't say anything about that steel since I haven't, you know, I, I only have two knives and I haven't done anything with them uh, so far. So we will have to see. Uh, looking at some other handle materials, we have some um, white G10 with mosaic pins. Looks like this. Kind of classy look to it. No liners, no liners on any of these, as I specified. Uh, and I also went with a natural handle material. I can't quite remember. I think it's like brown and green. Maple burl. I'm not. I'm not quite sure to be honest, uh, but it is a, a really nice material. Although it's kind of dark here, so you can't really see it. Uh, I did record a short video for the Facebook group here, the Bark River group. So I might just edit it in here uh, so that people can see what this one looks like. If we had, you know, just a tiny bit of sunshine here right now, you would have been able to pick up some some really nice um, patterns and colors. But as it is right now. Uh, the sky is very cloudy, but this is one of the more fancy options you can you can go with, in my opinion. There are, of course, a myriad of other handle configurations, maybe not available right now because, like I stated in my in my opening in this video, this was a limited run, 300 pieces only, uh, with about I don't know how many of them were actually pre-orders. But what is offered right now is a very limited selection but there were tons of uh, tons but there were a lot of different options with both uh, acrylics and uh, uh, natural handle materials uh, nice wood spurls etc uh, and so, some really great synthetic options as well so that is uh, that is what was offered let's take a look at some uh, related models of sort and i i think that um that the sandstorm is, of course, uh, the the model we should take the closest look at. Um, the smoke jumper being its uh, bigger brother. It's still like this at first. Here we have the sandstorm with a um, double kiln, double guard. Let's see. This is actually a really nice, nice handle material, but once again, it's kind of too dark to really, you know, see, see what's going on. But regardless, this is a sandstorm. This too is a sandstorm, but this one is, as you can see, single quillen or single guard with a sub hilt. Uh, they did make a few with a sub hilt, not many, 
And I think this is probably the only one that was sub hilt and single quillon or single guard. So uh, the difference, aside from being, you know, a smaller knife, smaller, shorter blade, uh, shorter handle, a thinner handle, that sort of uh, as well, is that the steel used for the sandstorm is CPM 154. So let's put them like that. Oh wait, maybe we should do like this and put a sand a smoke jumper in the middle so we can get a good size comparison. Doing like this. You can see that the handle is longer. The handle is also more contoured and slightly thicker. You get a, a lot more grip to it. The blade, as you can see, is also longer and perhaps also, or perhaps it is also slightly wider. I don't have the, you know, the specs in my head, but we can also look at um, um, the blade thickness. And to me, it looks as if the blade thickness is about uh, uh, the same. I think the sandstorm actually looks maybe slightly th thicker at the base, but I'm, you know, I'm not quite sure and doesn't really matter that much. You can also see that there is uh, a much more tapered, a much more tapered spiner or tapered. I mean, you have a, a deeper uh, swedge grind, longer and deeper swedge grind going on on the smoke jumper compared to the one on the sandstorm. I'm not quite sure how we're gonna get this in the camera in a good way. It's always quite tricky. All right, there we go. This, this shows pretty well the, the swedge. Yeah, <laughs> tricky sometimes with the, with the camera angle. So we have yet another model to, to compare it with, and that is, of course, the Wilderness Explorer. Now we get, once again, a new steel and a slightly different uh, blade profile. All the way fighter uh, at design. Hopefully this is quite visible, I'm not quite sure, but... So here we have these different blades. Sandstorm, Smoke Jumper, Wilderness Explorer. Uh, and this is the second run Wilderness Explorer, so it has a... a um, quite a thin handle which was only made on the second run. The first run and all runs after the, the second run has been with a thicker handle. So you can bear that in, in mind. Um, the Wilderness Explorer, unlike the Smoke Jumper, and uh, unlike the Smoke Jumper and Sandstorm, is a full tang, full exposed tang design. Um, it comes with single guard as the only option. There is no double guards going on here, no sub hilts. Uh, and the blade is, uh, it has a drop point, drop point design, and the camera is not, it's kind of hard. A drop point design and a full height grind. Uh, so this one is, is a lot different. You can also see that there's no real, there's no swedge grind or anything going on here uh, compared to the this being the, the smoke jumper. See if we can once again. Oh, it's not that easy. Yeah, 
Uh, this is not easy. I should probably put the camera in some other way, but uh, it is what it is. Um, and if I didn't mention, I did mention that it was another steel used, and this is uh, CPM Crewware. And Crewware is, uh, I'd say, it is probably about as tough as, uh, or you know, it plays in the same toughness league as CPM 3B. But Crewware has a better edge retention, but slightly, or not slightly, it has a worse corrosion resistance. And I generally prefer better corrosion resistance over better edge retention. Um, but regardless, I mean, I've had no bad experiences with my crewbar blades. I've had no, I've had no issues with corrosion because I usually take somewhat good care of my blades. So this is probably as far as we will go with actual comparisons. I will see if I can adjust the camera a bit so we can get a a closer and you know maybe a bit more over the top uh, shot at these three blades. Uh, I'll see what I can see what I can do. This is probably a, a lot better angle to look at the knives. I should have done this from the get-go but you, you know you, you learn as you do. So the Wilderness Explorer, the Smoke Jumper and the Subhilt Sandstorm. Um, Full height grind, CPM Crewwear, drop point, full tang. And did we take, maybe we can get a better look now at the spines here. We can't maybe fit them than the complete knives in, but we can take a, a look at the spines and see that they are, you know, pretty much, yeah, the, the wildness store is uh, slightly, slightly thinner. And you don't have the same, um, Swedge going on. This is. Let's take a look at the knife in hand. This is what this group looked like. I should probably switch this for the um, for the regular one without a a sub hilt. Let's see here. So this is what this knife looks in my hand. I wear size ten gloves. I mean, it's not, it's not a small knife, it's not a small handle, but once you compare it to, um, to the smoke jumper, it will look small. And this is the, the smoke jumper handle. You see there is a lot of handle going on here. And if I choke up like this, I doubt anyone will run out of handle, if I put it that way. So let's take a one last look at, uh, at all of the smoke jumpers. Um, together in this uh, close-up uh, uh, maybe we will be able to catch some of this nice uh, it is it is just too dark to get this uh, to get this handle look look right. Oh well, it is what it is. Man, I like when they are symmetrically, you know, lined up.
but I was hard today. <laughs> Maybe like this, but... Ah, close enough. So I guess that concludes my, you know, tabletop review or overview of the... of the Bark River Smoke Jumper second run. Over and out.